you're going to see uh, my analysis uh, and trading. So welcome. Let me see the PowerPoint is, aha, uh -huh. sorry about that. Just need to switch the screens here. Good, there we go. So once again, welcome. First of all, though, before we uh, take a look at the charts and technical analysis, this disclaimer is important to note that uh, the material here is intended for a global audience. Please take into account that the information in this session may not be suitable for everyone. To get the corresponding info on charting conditions and other details, please visit admarmarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity. <clears throat> Already. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk and it may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not intended as advice and the webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with the disclaimer mentioned here and on the AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com website. And as always, I do thank you for attention on both of these important disclaimers. Alrighty folks, well today is the 23rd already and we've got about one week left of September. So far my September has been pretty, pretty good. So I had, a, I had a good couple of last two weeks in fact. First week wasn't special but the last two weeks was pretty good so pretty happy about that. Uh, today our focus is Camarilla and intraday trading. So we're using Camarilla, but also moving averages and uh, pivot points, candlesticks, chart patterns, trend lines, quite a lot of tools, but some of them will not be always used depending on case by case, depending on the price and market structure. If you are new in here by any chance, or if this is maybe your second webinar or even third, please let me know because that way I have a bit more uh, idea, you know, if, if certain topics might need to be uh, explained a bit better. Otherwise, you see, the thing is if um, people have been already here in these rooms more often and then I'm not going to explain, explain regularly or have explained regularly um, just to, to save time and not, uh, uh, you know, go through and rehash too many things. Okay, great. So we got Morton who is here the second webinar. That's good to know. So I use this model, basically it's five steps, which I, I like to use as a discretionary tool or, or roadmap, basically. I mean, if you have, or even for your strategy, it's quite useful to use as an entry checklist. You know, what is the trend? If you look at the trend, you can use moving averages, trend lines, trend channels uh, to, to judge if there is a trend and what direction the trend is. You know, point two is looking for an opportunity. For instance, just because there's a trend doesn't mean that it's good to trade. An opportunity in a trend could be, for instance, a pullback. An opportunity reversal trader could be the presence of a double divergence, for instance. Then filters means basically looking at a higher time frame, probably a daily or weekly, and looking at uh, whether, for instance, that pullback, um, is there something that makes it less attractive. Maybe there is a big resistance or support level close by and actually a reversal could happen. So then you don't want to trade with the trend. Those types of filters or a news filter or a holiday filter, etc. Then establish a trigger, for instance, as a reversal trader, if there's a divergence between tops, the trigger could be a big pin bar uh, on the daily or four hour chart. That could be the trigger, but it doesn't have to be the entry. The entry could be different. The entry could be the re retracement of the wick or it could be the break of the candle high or low, right? That, or it could be even zooming into a lower time frame and, and taking a, a break of the 15 minute fractals, right? So that's a, a checklist that is quite useful, I think, when we're looking at the market together. Social media, take a look at Amazon Markets Twitter and Facebook. They always have good info, among others, my wave analysis, so I highly recommend that to take a look. And um, with that said, let's take a look at the calendar. And then, of course, we'll take a look at the charts finally. Last week, we had a lot of news events. Scotland voted with 55% of the people, at least, as far as I know, voted to stay in Great Britain. So that was, was a simple majority, meaning 50% or more. So um, 
that's what happened, which had, let's say, a bit of a pound positive probably, or the pound dollar did fall a bit after that. Um, so let's take a look at the pound in a second. We also had FOMC and other news events. This week is a bit quieter. We have our normal red tagged events like the Euro German manufacturing PMI. Uh, we have core retail sales on CAD, as you can see here. There are, of course, as always, some news events going on, but they're not of the same magnitude as we would expect with the FOMC, but still be cautious of these and treat them properly. So, with that said, let's take a look at uh, Camarilla. the Camarilla levels here are H5, H4, H3, L3, L4, L5, and they all represent basically uh, different meanings. The H levels are basically resistance levels, and the L levels are support levels. There are six of them, as we can see. The H3 and L3 and if price is in between them, that's basically the neutral zone of the day. That means price hasn't really broken anywhere. It's basically in a range territory. And taking longs off L3 and shorts off H3 um, as a classical range scenario is not a bad idea, depending on circumstances. If the market is in a bigger range, on, for instance, on the, on the 15 here, it, it makes sense. If the moving averages are quite flat, it makes sense. I mean, if the moving averages have a steep angle, like for instance in this fall here, I wouldn't be looking for trading against that, those moving averages. But when the moving averages are relatively flat, like this morning they were, that when the price hits the H3, it's not a bad thing to look for shorts at those levels because the moving average is flat, right? And it's also early in the day. So there's not usually that much momentum, uh, you know, early, I don't know, two hours before the, the European session opens. So things like that are potentials with H3 and L3, but really I don't want to see any momentum in the moving averages because that's the difference, for me at least, to, the, to, to decide how am I going to treat the H3, H4, H5 and the L3, L4, L5. Am I going to use them? as bounce spots or breakout spots. And it's difficult, I, th I think, difficult to know which one is better without the moving averages. That's why I think it's a pretty neat combination to use moving averages with Camarilla, because Camarilla is, is, is very useful, it's very good. Uh, you can use other tools, other tools uh, and indicators to provide confluence at the Camarillas. I primarily use moving averages, as, as most of you know, because of that momentum reader, right? The, the understanding of momentum and if there is momentum and obviously if there is to which direction. Therefore, if there's no momentum, looking for bounce trades at these levels makes sense. If there is momentum, looking for breakout uh, breakouts below L3 or above H3 or below L4 and above H4 makes sense. If price hits H5 or L5, then we're hitting the target zone. And I would preferably not be looking for much trend continuations above or uh, H5 or below L5 because then we've already gotten into a territory for that day, for that trading day into a kind of like far, far, far away from the average. And although price could still continue, especially if there's a tight Camarilla, where Camarilla is really close to each other, then price has the tendency maybe even to use H5 as a bouncing spot again, or L5. But if it's a, you know, that could happen. But generally speaking, you know, you don't want to trade it too often, too much above H5 or below L5 because the expectancy what price could do and move within that trading day is limited compared to when it's still below H4 or above L4. Or in other words, in this zone right in here. Or in this zone right in here. The H3, L3 is the core and then as far as soon as we get above H3 uh, or, or hit H3 basically like this, for instance here, if the moving averages would be bullish, that could be a breakout level, but they aren't, they're flat. So I wouldn't consider H3 as important as yet. You see the difference here? The H3 
is a breakout level, but I want to see bullish moving averages. If it were, that would be a good breakout. Or if price, the same fractal as, for instance, DH4, or anywhere in between. Another way uh, of looking at it, for instance, as we said in the st five steps, right? Step four is establishing a trigger, and five is the entry method. Although the H3 in this case could be a resistance because the moving averages are not that well. Now it looks a bit on the upper side, but don't get fooled because we zoomed in a lot. This H3, practically speaking, normally more resistance than anything. But you don't, you know, a trader wouldn't have, to, I wouldn't have to necessarily short it right as price hits H3. One could also wait for uh, a candlestick pattern like a shooting star we see here as a confirmation of the fact that price is stopping at the H3. Or even zoom in, although it's, we already quite zoomed in on a 50 minute chart, to a 5. Well, I wouldn't show five shows a bit of wicks, also candlestick patterns, even to a one. I know that sounds funny, but if you want to wait for the break of a one-minute fractal, the entry would be here, for instance, and it's basically taking break, taking the break of the low of the 50-minute chart. That's also a way of trading the H3, not trading it right at the H3, but waiting for a 50-minute shooting star. And you know that would be the trigger, maybe the entry, the one minute fractal break. I wouldn't recommend normally, by the way, trading one minute. I'm just giving a hypothetical example by zooming in. Sometimes I do it though. Uh, not sure if I would do it on the euro dollar before the European Open because I wouldn't expect much movement. But in this case, it didn't work out that bad. So anyhow, I'm just trying to explain the uh, the mechanisms one can use it. Also, if you see a big trend on the hourly chart and you see moving averages bearishly or bullishly aligned, then looking for shorts, for instance, if there's a downtrend, looking for shorts at H3, H4, H5 makes sense because we're in a bigger downtrend on, the, on a higher time frame. So if price hooks back to it, that could be resistance for downside. It's basically like a short-term up, uptrend, but it's bump, there's a high chance that it bumps into some higher time frame trend. You wouldn't want to do it the other way around. If we're in a downtrend, you don't want to look for longs then at L3, L4, L5 most of the time because we're in a downtrend, unless you see good you know, divergence and some good reasons to maybe trade it off the L5 because you're expecting a reversal from there. That's a different story. That's still possible. In general, though, you want to be careful of that. And the best trades are either with the trend in, in a breakout scenario or as a bounce resistance scenario, um, with the exception of maybe a reversal trade from here. Whether the Camarilla works on the hourly, uh, well, the hourly I don't even have it on the hourly. I have it on the 30 minute chart. I don't have it on the hourly because I don't want to crowd the chart too much because we have the pivot points on that chart and I think it would be a bit too too messy. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with having the Camarilla on the hourly though. Uh, I think the values and of the, of the level still have the same importance. So, But the daily, not because the Camarillas are intraday levels, so not for daily. So I hope that makes sense. Now let's continue with looking at the euro dollar from a practical today, I mean from a practical point of view, what can we expect today? And we're seeing the euro dollar move up on the 50 minute chart. I would not be looking to trade the break of this resistance. I would not be looking to enter upon the break of H3 here. Although it could work out, I'm not saying. Uh, um, this this trend line here as well. <clears throat> In my vision, the moving averages are not bullish as yet, and uh, therefore I would want to see price move up, make a retracement, and then the next bounce slash break is where I'm interested. 
one of the reasons that the advantage, you know, some of the advantages of that is the fact that if it is a false break, I'm not caught in that. Will it become a false break? We don't know. But because I'm sticking to my rules, basically focus on the rules, I don't have an angle on the moving averages like I did to the downside here or even here. It's flat. So I'm not interested, basically, at the moment. But it could change. If this price moves up and the moving averages start to, to point up, then the next break is different. That's the point of view, in my opinion, on the 50-minute chart. Let's take a look at the hourly now. Price bounced off the daily pivot point. It's a bit of a wick. Uh, all in all, if I uh, if I look at this formation, maybe from let me put on a clean template here in a way, just to show you the chart pattern a bit. Not looking at everything else. Not looking at any levels. Just blank, pure price action, and it's easier to take everything off so you can see it. It's that you can see that the euro dollar is, is having a bit of a struggle with the downside at the moment. You can see here this support line with four touches, uh, either this resistance line or even this resistance line, maybe something like that, uh, indicating either a break of a rising wedge excuse me, falling wedge, or it's still rising wedge intact. And this formation we can see here, meaning there is a potential reversal, right, or retracement, bigger retracement. That's what potentially could happen with the euro dollar. The downside, every time price moves down, it's making a bottom that doesn't go as far. That's basically the psychology behind a falling or or falling wedge, right? That's why it's a potential reversal sign because, as it was in the previous downtrend parts, we also have divergence between the four-hour bottoms. It's only single, but still, the daily AO has been rounding up at the moment, and obviously we had a tremendous fall already. Uh, in this part without any significant retrace. So these signs are a warning sign. Are they a must that price must go up, price must retrace to the upside? No. I've seen plenty of times that price still just stays within a falling wedge like this and just like inches up and down and stays in consolidation. So I'm not all too interested in your dollar at the moment. This break was wonderful. I traded that break. Uh, I even traded from here to the downside, actually, this pullback, this one here at the 61.8 fib. So two trades to the downside for me on the euro dollar. Now, not interested. Too messy here in this formation and um, looking for new info. Either, um, I'm not sure, I, I just will need to see some of something going up probably. Uh, I'm expecting a bit more upside as a reversal probably than anything. But if price does find some rejection still, uh, I'll keep an eye on it. Let's take a look at the 50 now again. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm not all too excited about trading to the downside. Maybe if it breaks this trend line throughout the trading day, who knows. Um, let's now take a look at the Camarillo levels. Yeah, price will probably have to break, hit the L3 and then bounce off it and break below it. Same probably with the H4, in fact, for the upside. Maybe some intraday trades, nothing on long-term, though. Pound dollar, also an interesting scenario. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at the clean template just for a second. And we'll dive into the Camarilla, don't worry, uh, very soon after that. Uh, here we've had a tremendous downtrend, too. Not as big as the euro dollar, but still a very nice one. And this fall, accelerating 1,200 pips before we got a decent 500 pip bounce. This is a very strong down surge, so I would still expect, you know, down momentum. I would still expect some follow through on that. And if we look at the candlestick patterns, we see a pretty bearish candle on Friday. Big wick, bearish close, very near the low. 
uh, that looks like a good reversal or, or continuation, I should say, maybe of the previous momentum. So that high, which is also last week's high, is important, I think, if price stays below that high, anything, any upside here could be retracement still for more downside. If price manages to break above this high, the market structure is different, obviously, and uh, price, you know, could be making an uptrend. So that is a key level. So zooming in now to the four-hour chart, we can see that this, this is how the correction looks like to the upside. And we had a spike right here. I think this was Thursday prior or during the referendum results, um, positive for the pound. And then we had downside. And I would say this is a pretty good trend line if price breaks through that trend line, specifically if it breaks through this bottom here at 163, I think there's a breakout potential with the momentum, with the downside momentum we see already here. So now let's take a look and put the template on for the Camarilla. <clears throat> this is how it looks like on the four hour chart if you have moving averages on and you can see price stayed below the 21 band. The 21 band is just, if there's any concept in the world that I would, would want to keep, it's the 21 band. If I had to choose anything, probably, uh, it would have to be that because it's so, so, so beautiful. Um, not to get too sentimental on you, but you see how it captures price action so nicely. Anytime price gets back to it, it respects those. You can see candlestick patterns, although, you know, I have very, it's very small, so it's difficult for you to see, but here's a candlestick pattern. And, you know, not always a candlestick pattern, which is sometimes great signals of candlestick patterns at the moving averages or price retracing back to them. And all of these places where price goes back to the 21 band, when you get a good trend, you know, look at that. Very, very useful information, isn't it? Right? Now here we broke, here we stayed below it and then broke above it. And then you use the 21 band to get to the 89 or even higher. And now the 21 and 89 are, are intertwined. Right? So this was a very good downtrend and now price Use the 21 to get up to the 89 as a retracement. Or, yeah. So now we're moving our intertwined, so we have to see uh, how price responds uh, in this uh, area. Let's take a look at the hourly. In the meantime, you see that as the four hour 21 band is retracing, the hourly is already showing at some parts uptrend, right? That's because the four hours are tracing strongly. So we see on hourly, when we zoom in, we see uptrend already. Here we see a crossover, some struggle, but then here we see some with the trend already continuation. Why? Because the 21 is above the 89. All right. Now here we see a strong momentum fall. So the question is, is this a bear flag for more downside? Right in here. Is that a bear flag? Because if you look at the moving averages, they're not giving us much information. They're just flat. And the 21 is a bit above the 89. That's not much info. But the chart pattern is more valuable. The impulse here and the slow upside. Looking like impulse correction, which means that there's a chance of another impulse to the downside as a pair of flag continuation pattern. We do have, a, if we look from a pivot point of view, we do have the daily and weekly pivot point right below it. So those levels are important. This bottom is important. There's still some point of resistance left. But if we break the bear flag here, I think there is potential for that momentum to the downside. We just have recently pretty strong hourly candle here, so it's showing some signs of downside. So one more thing we could do is add a fib from here to here and say, okay, where did it stop? Stopped at the 38.2 fib, almost the 50. Alrighty, so let's take a look now at the Camarilla. We have a bit of context how the bigger time frames and market structures look like. So now we can analyze what is interesting. What is not interesting on the Camarilla is a bit more besides only looking at the levels. If we look at now only purely at the Camarilla levels, what do we see? Maybe I can use the 30. What do we see? We see price having dojis at the H3. So maybe if you would have liked that potential as a range bounce off of that uh, H3, uh, H, yeah, H3. Um, that could have been a trade for you this earlier this morning. Um, 
because it was, as I said, just like the euro, the session didn't start, usually the pound doesn't make a lot of movement, so there's often enough not a high chance of a breakup price, therefore pushing through the H3 without at least a bit of retracement is not all too high as we can now see because we got the retracement. So, of course, uh, these are extra supporting factors for looking for a short at H3. Now, if we look at the moving average here, the 15-minute moving averages, they're becoming bearish, but the 21 is still above the 89. So I'm not looking for any trade in any direction as yet. Not as yet. Not if I look at uh, the moving averages in combination with the Camarilla. Uh, they, there could have been, although I wouldn't have taken it due to time elements, but there could have been a potential breakout here. The moving averages were bullish. And we had three fractals, looks like an ascending wedge, right at the H3, but price didn't break through it. And anyhow, I wouldn't look to trade it, that breakout, personally. But in theory, I'm just showing you the theory behind it. Now price is retracing, so I'm waiting and seeing. What could happen, though, is price, if price makes another fall, like this, and then starts to retrace like that, the 21 band will, will be you know, over the 89, probably, or close to it. It doesn't have to be that precise. And then the next break, boom, that's already here with the trend breakout. And that would basically be a break pullback continuation trade, wouldn't it? That's one scenario. The other scenario is price uses support here for a upside. In that regard, uh, you know, you might wonder how would a long at AL3, L3 for instance. I'm not all too big of a fan of, um, of trading pound dollar off of, HDs and L3s, I'd rather wait for breakouts personally. Um, but it is possible that it bounces there. And um, one could wait for candlestick patterns as a confirmation. Or skip the L3. Don't forget, on the hourly, there's not only the L3, by the way, but also the daily and weekly pivot point in this area, which is about 163.30-ish. So another supporting factor there. Um, skip the, the bounce and wait for price to move back up and wait for the break instead. A break of H3 in these fractals, but I need to see bullish moving averages. Already, dollar yen. Dollar yen is an example of a breakout to the downside, although it's funny because the hourly is, is an uptrend or was an uptrend, the four hour still is an uptrend, right? That's why I'm a bit uh, cautious, and you have to be quick on your feet, I think, with the 15-minute reversal trade because, look, every time, uh, or not every time, but most of the time, uh, price is back at the 21 EMA, you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty good discount on the four-hour chart. Now, we don't have any divergence between these tops, so that's a bit risky. Now. Yeah, therefore, we also have the daily S1, the 38.2 fib. Yeah, I have to admit, I would skip it. I mean, from a strictly strategy point of view on a 50-minute chart, um, it's a breakout trade. Why? Because we have a fractal at L3. We have bearing averages. So either a break here of this fractal or a break of this fractal are potentials for shorts. The momentum is down, price is breaking through support. Right there. So yeah, it does have everything. From a discretionary point of view, uh, I'm not a big fan of it, um, personally. But sometimes, you know, my discretionary analysis uh, removes winning trades. I won't deny it. Sometimes it removes Lot losing trades, but this is an example of a breakout. I'm not going to take it though. One one hundred eight fifty. Um, I too worried about one hundred eight fifty and potential price bouncing at one hundred eight thirty, for instance, uh, as well. So no, I will skip that one. But in theory, that would qualify. But it's not with the bigger trend. Let's take a look at the odd USD. Adusd was had a pretty nice uh, downtrade uh, on Monday, 
right? Uh, odd weakness on Monday. I don't know if you not, noticed, but uh, we had some good Aussie downside. Uh, when we look at the beginning of this week, it was somewhere in here. We had kind of ah, we had a kind of a bear flag like this, and here, boom, the break for downside. Right now, price is retracing pretty steep upwards, and if anything, we're actually at a, in a bullish bounce scenario despite the hourly downtrend. So, 50-minute upside momentum hourly downtrend with divergence. So it's it's a mix. And mixtures are always more risky, but doesn't mean that they're never you know they're not always tradable. But they're just not much not this, not aligned as much obviously when both time frames are showing a trend in the same direction. Uh, but this to me, if anything, um, looking more like a bouncing spot than despite the downtrend than, than a bearish. Uh, spot that would change probably if we break this trend line like that. For instance, then we might see follow through and start to break through the L3 as well. For the moment, we broke through H3. This could be a break pullback continuation potential against the trend though uh, on the hourly. Let's take a look at the four hour here too. You can see. Very strong momentum. Look at the four hour. Boom. Ever increasing gap between the 21 and 89. So I'm not a big fan of this. Uh, I'm going to continue and see if there's anything else that um, might make sense. Um, this is not the, the one I get the most excited about. Just because it's counter such a big momentum on the four hour. In fact, looking, I mean, if it wouldn't have been for the hourly divergence, um, looking for a bounce off of H4 as a resistance is another way of looking at it, by the way. Um, forgot to mention that. But this could be like a shooting star, could have been an interesting short because of the bigger downtrend. But there is hourly divergence, so all in all, waiting on both sides is maybe not a bad plan. Let's see if there's anything else interesting. Uh, in today's market, H3, L3, sideways on the Kiwi. Don't like the Kiwi at the moment. Too flat, too bouncy. Um, you can maybe use the Camarillas to, to, as resistance support levels for those bounces. Dollar Cat, let's take a look. If we put a fib on the last swing, high swing, low, I wouldn't mind a long at 38.2 fib and the L3 or the 61.8 and the L4. I think those are good upside potentials. Why? Because if you look at the hourly, uh, we're in uptrend. We broke out of this consolidation here, this trend line. Uh, let's see, right in here, that trend line, that resistance trend line, there we go. I don't know which color I should use, uh, let me make it, uh, let me make it this color, otherwise I don't know, or maybe orange in fact, let me use orange. Alrighty, so that that resistance trend line, um, good breakout. So if we trade, if we if we fib the breakout from here to here, and you know any of these fibs, I think could be good bouncing spots. We have a daily pivot as well as a 38.2 fib and a weekly pivot at the 61.8, and those weekly and daily pivot points are the same at the L3 and L4. So we have confluence, strong confluence at these two spots. I think it could be interesting to look for longs at at these levels. Um, if a direct pending order is, is used, the stop loss has to be here. If I wait for candlestick patterns to emerge, 
I might not use the wider stop loss, but the candle lows for the stop loss. All right. Uh, otherwise, let's discuss the fact if price doesn't go that deep, then I want to see price breaking uh, to the upside. And I want to see price actually in uptrend. As we want to see the 50 minute moving averages in upside. And uh, then I would consider the upside trade and the breakout, of course. All right. So that's basically the dollar cat. We don't have that at the moment. We're still below the H3, so that could be the potential for today when price breaks up to the H4, L5. From a higher time frame perspective, I think that's pretty interesting. Because if you look at technical analysis and you put some lines on the chart, first of all, you see that the dollar CAD is on a weekly uptrend, and we recently had a bounce here. It furthermore broke outside of this resistance line. It also, after breaking that resistance line, made a higher high, higher low, bounced off the 50 fib with a pin bar, went to the target, then retraced back bounced off the 78.6 fib of, of the next fib with a pin bar and had a good continuation upside candle yesterday. If we then zoom into the four hour chart, we see after the seven after the 78.6 fib, price breaking this resistance line for breakout. So obviously this top is, is still a resistance, but all in all very strong uptrend. If we then zoom into the hourly, we can see that this is the breakout after the breakout. And basically, here at this moment, we're looking for price. It stopped already at the 272. We're looking for price to go up to the minus 618 target here. And the, these, these five targets, right? As a break, pullback, continue. And within the continue, we're in a break, pullback, continue. Problem. Now, from a reversal point of view, uh, we, you never know. This could be a spike up like this, something like It's always good to look for price action and candlestick confirmations because uh, most of the time, I mean, unless there's a very good decisive bouncing or break spot, uh, there are always two ways of, of looking at the market in a way, to a certain degree. Uh, waiting for confirmation of one's analysis doesn't hurt. We do see a bit of a bullish, uh, bearish engulfing twins here. Um, so, you know, this, waiting for a bit more confirmation on whether price will bounce never hurts. If we put a fib now back on here, with those bearish engulfing twins, price going back to the 38.2 or the 61.8 fibs is probably not a strange thing to happen. The top is 111, by the way. That's an important level because it was last week's high and the week before that. So that's about it. I guess uh, I wouldn't, yeah, I would expect bullishness, but let's see if we get the confirmations and from where. Dollar Swissy. From a Caramella point of view, stuck in a range. That's that's not interesting at the moment. I think personally, um, from a four-hour point of view, pretty choppily price action as of late. We are though in a strong dollar uptrend on the dollar Swissy. Uh, not too interesting in me, in my opinion. Euro yen could be good for the downside. Um, Euro yen is traveling with bearish moving averages as we speak, and price 21 below the 89, and we have break of the L3. So this could be. I'm already in the short, but this could be a good shorting level um, for the L5, for instance, as a, as a, as a target. If we look at this formation, it does have momentum. This now that it broke, the bear flag was a bear flag and another bear flag, and this could be breaking towards the support level somewhere in here. So that looks like 
a potential breakout as we speak. We have price below the L3 with bearish moving averages. That's exactly what we're looking for. Same with the pound yen. Bearish moving averages, price breaking below the L3, for instance. But it didn't actually stop at the L3. So we'll probably have a bounce still eventually and then break side. But this one is moving pretty nicely um, off of the H3, which is the 23.6 fib as well. So any bounce up here looks like good shorts, just like the euro yen in my opinion. These two, I mean, when we look at the, the number of currency pairs so far, uh, we've looked at two, four, six, uh, nine of them. To me, the euro yen, pound yen looked the most interesting. And then the dollar cat. And then the pound dollar. Euro yen, yes, indeed, exactly um, the same actually as the pound yen. Looks look good like a short right now uh, because it's move average are bearish and its price is breaking below the L3 and fractals that are hitting the L3. So to me, this looks like a good short zone. I mean, stop loss. There are various ways of looking at it always, of course. Uh, but a stop loss, I would say, you know, a very tight one would be above 75. That's very tight, very, very tight. Uh, a looser one would be above the H3, 140-ish, 03. Uh, a a loose-loose one would be maybe 140, 25, 27, above H4. And even looser one would be maybe 140, 43, above H5. Or 140, 53. Let me take a look. Yeah. 140.53. So you know, those are the levels to think about stop losses. Um, don't look at my levels here because it's a different situation. Um, but uh, those were technical levels. You know, one could think about these are resistances. I do think that the tighter one is a bit risky. I would not uh, go for that one probably. I think maybe above the H3 is a good compromise. Obviously, the, there's nothing wrong necessarily with the loose sir, stop loss. Uh, by the way, the only thing is that uh, we need to compensate it with more pips. But by having a bit looser stop loss, sometimes you also are sur surviving deeper pullbacks. And uh, you have less problems with getting wicked out at the case, in cases and stuff like that. So don't dismiss uh, you know wider stop losses. They're sometimes pretty pretty beneficial. Bit of volatility during because of the German uh, news event. I actually forgot to keep an eye on that. Let's take a look. News event, of course, could always change the dynamics of the technicals that I'm looking at. So, something to keep an eye on. Should be ready. Let's take a look in a, in a minute, and we'll have those events ready. So, well, it's a bit of volatility. It's down, it's up, it's down. What can you do? That happens uh, with those news events. A bit annoying, but technically speaking, if there wouldn't be a news event, I like the shorts, uh, the short on the euro yen. I like the pound yen short, but it hasn't bounced us yet. So that's sometimes annoying if you wait for a bit of confirmation. Uh, by the way, uh, you know, the L3 level maybe was not ideally positioned in this case because of this trend line, for instance, or even this trend line, right? Um, those are breaks that of, of a tr support that sometimes uh, are good to keep an eye on as well. Besides Camarilla, sometimes when price breaks a trend line like that, it, it blasts through Camarilla as well. But most of the time, it does stop at the Camarilla levels. I think a high majority of the time, not in the pound yen. Pound yen this time around, not. 
Um, Pangan can be sometimes a very big mover. So in this case, even if it bounces off L5, I wouldn't be all too worried that L5 is, is the end of today's market because let's face it, the market just started. The pound yen moves a lot. It slowed down recently. So the H5, L5 territory is small for the pound yen at the moment. Therefore, I would not mind trading this pound yen, although generally speaking, I don't like to trade it below the L5. With the pound yen having such a tight range between H5 and L5 as, as it has, uh, I would not mind to trade it uh, even below the L5 today on the pound yen because of the the bear flag that we had here on the pound yen. Odd yen is moving down as well. Let's get rid of these lines. Price hit H4 as a resistance spot. Price was in a downtrend. So looking for shorts here, um, doing pretty well. The one hour shooting star, for instance, good signal. So you can see there are really no rush for, for entries, no rush to, 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 to try to catch a reversal trade when it's, you know, there's most of the time, plenty of time to, to take, to analyze spots and above all not to chase the market. At some points obviously price will start to fall and accelerate away from the zone we are thinking of. Right? And uh, but usually at that point it's not so good to, to chase it. Euro odd, let's see, made a, a pretty nice retracement. We know that the odd weakness pushed the euro odd up, but some odd strength also sent it back down. Overall, the one hour and four hour is still an uptrend. Therefore, this more probably a bouncing area than anything. I'm going to wait and see at the moment. Now price is just in the middle of nowhere. Pound odd. We're getting some pound downside. Um, and we're, price is actually breaking through an L3 as we speak. Price is trying to break through the fractal near the L3 with the good moving averages. Uh, so in that regard, yes, this could be a breakout trade. It's a, I would class, classify it more as a breakout scenario uh, on the uh, reversal breakout, excuse me, on the pot odd, but uh, it does qualify. So it is at L3, the moving averages are bearish, there's, there's a crossover happening, there's a fractal three prices trying to break through it, there's good momentum. So I think this is also a breakup potential. Now the yen is moving more than the odd is because the odd yen is also moving down. And that's why the pound yen looks at this moment a bit better. But let's take a look at the odd yen one more time. Yeah, again, it looks pretty bearish. There is some support line here that we have to be aware of. So we could see maybe some Aussie and pound still. So both look decent. Pound weakness against yen and odd at the moment. And I like the pound odd more than the than the euro odd at this moment. And that probably has to do with the fact that I guess your pound is moving up. Pound odd potential break. So let's see. Now, obviously, as I said, this is still slash a bit of a reversal trade. So there could be maybe one more upside here before we get the bigger crash. The next break could even be more interesting, in fact, than the pound on. Let's take a look at the hourly. You can see that if you just wait for 21 to cross the 89 and look for the nearest uh, break or pull back to the 21 or break of the, the fractal, you know, you're all the way in here for a good write up. Then you got to move back to the 89 again. And if you wait for that, you got to get another good move up. It's um, simple, but you got two good swing trades on the pound out to the upside here. You got one, two, three swing trades to the, maybe let's say two to the downside here. 
We got good trends, they're good stuff to, to look at, right? Got multiple ones here. Obviously, when it's choppy, the price and moving averages are, are intertwined like that, you want to skip it. That's how you can use uh, the 20, the, these moving averages as a, as, a, as a swing trade technique. Now, today's focus is Camarilla, so I won't dive into that too much. Um, also, obviously, because it's an hourly, uh, the chances of that happening exactly in the hour where I'm having the webinar with you are also smaller. But uh, stay tuned for that. Maybe tomorrow we have Fork Strategy webinar, uh, which we can discuss that a bit more. Um, unless you have a specific question, I definitely don't mind looking at it. But uh, that's how you can look at the hourly too. Back to the Camarilla though. Camarilla intraday method and or levels and uh, looking for the breakout on on the pairs I mentioned. Not the euro odd that much because we're getting a bit of euro uh, bat rebounds compared to the pound. We could probably see that difference here in the pound dollar, which is breaking to the downside. And the euro dollar is pushing up to H3. The dollar yen was also moving down, and that's why probably um, the pound yen is moving so much. And dollar yen, although I didn't take it, did move down close to 20 pips. So those that did are happy, and I'm glad for that. Alrighty. Um, pound yen is also up about 10. Uh, sorry, Urien. Good, let's move on. I think we've discussed most of these pairs, but Bjorn wants to take a look at silver. Let's take a look at that. Silver. Wow, it's uh, pushing through 1820. I didn't check silver yesterday. Sorry, Brian, I didn't see your email, unfortunately. Um, but I can see why you're interested. 1820 broken. 1820 is the bottom dating back to June 2013, which is the bottom of the fall we had in, from October 2012, so in eight months, nine months. Price fell all the way from 35 to 18. Silver basically lost half of its value almost, very close to half in nine months. Big dramatic fall. Um, after the second dramatic fall, after falling from 50 down to 25, which was also about half of its value. So we see zigzag, correction, impulse, correction, and maybe now yet another. Scary if we can go yet again to half of its value, of its current value, if it's 18 now. No, wait, for the top. So the top here is 21 and a half. That would mean it would be, could go to, if it would do half again, it will be 11, almost 11. So. That is here. Let's see. Uh, who knows? The thing is, though, that we did have on silver specifically even stronger than gold a falling wedge after very clear momentum to the downside. So this is looking awesome. It's looking very interesting. Um, it's difficult to imagine how far it could fall, but obviously it is a bearish break. And Dollar is gaining against other pairs, so it is doing it the same against silver and, and gold. And it's, it's difficult to believe, obviously, when you were trading this uh, in 2009, specifically in this part, which was, I think, like 2010, most of it, part of 2011, indeed, where we had about seven months up straight. That was, of course, a big bull run because other, until then, Price hardly exceeded 20, and in seven months we went from 20 to 50. That was obviously awesome trading. Yeah, but we've had some very good momentum here to the downside after that as well. So silver so definitely becoming a, a big mover compared to maybe the 
smaller movements we had here, here, even here. Back in 2003, 2004, five even price, you know, bouncing back and forth between four and eight dollars. Difficult to imagine. Only 2004, only yeah, uh, nine to eleven years ago. Then it was captured between the 20 range and nine range. For another five, four years. So yeah, in that regard, it's not that strange. This is where price usually was. The upside was just maybe yeah, it was a big spike. I'm not saying that we'll never get back to that level, but looks like we got some bearishness first of all. So back to the order of the day. Um, good 21 EMA. Friday was a big down day, in fact. Very strong trend here on the four hour, strong downside on the hourly. I would probably feel comfortable with fitting this breakout right in here. Any of these fibs, really, to be honest. Any of these 50, 61.8, 78.6, although. I wouldn't expect price to go above uh, the 1820 that, that's that much because of that fact that that is the support level that probably becomes resistance now, even the 18 round number. So, yeah, if price gets up to 18, 18, yeah, 18, 1786, 1810, that'd probably be resistance here, H3, H4, stop loss, I would say above this high and it should be fine or above the H5 at least. The other scenario is if price pushes through the L3 for a breakout trade to the downside. We could use the same uh, Camarilla levels basically and pullback levels as, as most of these uh, pairs, currency pairs. Now I do read it. In your email I have open now that you're trading mostly daily charts. So let's take a look at the daily. You say at the break of the major support there used to be a lot of bull bear fight, so easy to get stop out. And with two big stop loss you lose big. So I was thinking of using first fractal and four hour that shows up. We take a look at your uh, screenshot and I'll share it with the rest. Ah, one second, it's opening in, in a format that I cannot share it with you. Um, apologies for that. It's a bit annoying. Alrighty. Well, let me move on. I'll look at it, and once it opens, not opening somehow. Gold, by the way, hasn't broken the bottom as yet. Still falling as a straight arrow, but still has some ways to go before it hits the bottom. You can see the price. I get a weekly bearish weekly bearish weekly candle. And the four hour chart here showing a nice channel to the downside and price staying within that channel as well. So price is not as strong, dollar is not as strong against uh as uh, against silver uh against gold as against silver, but still a nice channel. You can see if price hits this channel for more downside for instance. Right now making what it looks like a bear flag within a downtrend channel. So if price gets up there to the top of that channel, if price gets to the minus 272 target or the minus 680 target at 1223 or 1227, that looks like resistance. 
So I see Brian's screenshot now. Let's see. Bjorn has a short around 1772, I think. 17, no, 1774 or 5 maybe. Stop loss at 17, just above this top. Okay. Uh, that could work, yep, although it's on the tighter side, but it's assuming that the H3 will hold it, which it definitely could. Uh, it did hook back all the way to 1787, pretty strong retracement, 38.2 Fib could be the, the Fib where it stops. Um, there is a slight chance that, as I said, it could hit the 50 Fib uh, or the 1800 level before moving down. Uh, but, yeah, maybe not the, I would still think it's a fair chance that, that the trade setup could work. Uh, probably it might, I mean, if I would have done, I probably would have put a stop loss just a bit wider, but, uh, and maybe take less lots to, to, to take same risk, but with a bigger stop loss. But, just because I would take a more conservative approach to the stop loss doesn't mean that that will necessarily indeed prove to be the best. This tighter one could work fine. And the entry is up a bit. We're getting a bit of a pullback. That's because price is bouncing off L3. In your case, it would be good if price manages to, to go below L3 and starts to make the breakout. So that's my two cents. Um, let me know if you have any follow-up questions, okay? Otherwise, Don't forget, you know, once you have a plan, it's better to stick to the plan. Don't let, you know, in that regard, um, don't, don't get um, loss of or decrease of self-confidence in this trade just because of my word. I'm just analyzing it from a neutral point of view, but the best is to stick to, to your trading plan. In fact, uh, more of you of the first four-hour fractal. I use the first four-hour fractal. Got it. Mm -hmm. I can see that. That's a, that's a good reason. There is a four-hour fractal indeed. Cheers, Bob. See you soon. And most of these four-hour fractals did pretty good. Sometimes you get a bit of a break of the four-hour fractal. You see here, for instance, uh, here breaks it just a bit, here just a bit, here just a bit, just a bit. Uh, not these, though. Here we get two breaks. Here, two smaller breaks, small break. So you get sometimes small breaks, but a lot of these, the, 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 the fractals get respected, price stays below the previous fractal. And to be, to be honest, if there is a break, it's often not much. So, I mean, most of these didn't break. The, the few that we did see, it was how much? You know, you're looking at a few cents most of the time, except this one here. But most didn't indeed. Other than that, looks like your cat is a, maybe in a potential good situation. We have an up momentum here. That could be a breakout to the, to the upside. <clears throat> Excuse me. Otherwise, <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, otherwise, uh, your New Zealand is in balance. I'm not interested in that one. It's too choppy. Um, but it looks like your pound upside could be maybe that, not that bad, in fact. Um, I don't like trading that one. But otherwise, we're seeing euro strength against the other pairs and, and pound weakness. So that seems to be the driver at the moment. Uh, odd weakness was yesterday. Now odd is making a correction. So uh, be cautious with trading the odd weakness at the moment. Probably look for Eurocat upside, for instance. Looks good to me. And pound yen, pound dollar downside, pound odd. 
and maybe eventually add dollar downside. Maybe eventually you're out your dollar upside, but still question mark. And the euro yen downside is working nicely. This is up also close to to 40, 20, 20 pips, excuse me. Pound yen just doesn't stop crazy. So yeah, I guess that's the that my view of the market today. So um if you took to your yen, wish you good trading. Hope that you nailed those pips. As I said, I, I would be, depending on where you have the stop loss, target could be L5, uh, target could be daily S2, or even uh, all the way back at the, the daily S3, for instance, here, pivot point. Uh, you could even put a fib from here to here. Target could be the minus 272 target at 139.27 or the minus 618 target at 138.80. Those are the levels to think about for today's intraday trading. Um, 138.80 is another 65 pips, which would be a good 85 pip target. So yeah, something like that, 85 or Or yeah, the, the 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 closer target is only is at twenty, let's say twenty five ish. So that's only another forty. Let's see, and only another. That would be about forty forty five pip trade. So that's would be if you use a tighter stop loss, that could be a good TP. For instance, if you use a bit larger one, and the eighty five is probably better. So that's what I would be thinking about targets. So I hope you you catch those pips. And um, we'll be back tomorrow with more webinars. Tomorrow we have Forex Strategy webinar in the morning, as always, and then in the evening. Then it's going to take a look at. Oops. Then it is going to take a look at the most important factors in fundamental analysis. In the evening, once again, morning strategy. Thursday, price action and pivot points in the morning. And in the evening, uh, we have a webinar on swing highs, swing lows, and zigzags. So I hope to see you soon. Wish you all a good day as well. Cheers.